Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. A concept that was revolutionary in its time is now the norm for a powerful navy. This is the case for the nuclear-powered aircraft carriers, which were developed to reduce the need to have frequent stops for refueling ships. The first carriers were created after World War II, as the Navy started to implement applications of nuclear energy and reactors to produce electricity for naval vessels. This led to the creation of the USS Enterprise aircraft carrier, commissioned in 1964. Enterprise would go on to complete 25 deployments during its 51 years of service. Nowadays, all carriers of the US Navy are powered by nuclear energy, and the Naval Nuclear Power Training Command in South Carolina trains nuclear operators. Nuclear machinist mates are an essential part of the operation of an aircraft carrier, working as the Navy's nuclear reactor mechanics. Mates tirelessly operate and maintain steam turbines for the nuclear ship's propulsion and auxiliary machinery, such as turbo generators, pumps, and oil purifiers. Also, these mechanics are in charge of keeping the auxiliary machinery, like refrigeration plants or air conditioning systems, in optimal condition. Those nuclear operations go beyond the machinists, as they also include the nuclear electronics technician who handles the operating control systems of the reactor room and the nuclear electrician mate in command of the ship's electrical power. A complex assembly of systems and machinery within an aircraft carrier engine room can be seen in vessels such as the legendary USS Enterprise. This ship's propulsion was generated by eight Westinghouse second-generation A2W nuclear reactors, making it the only aircraft carrier to house more than two nuclear reactors. Both of them are pressurized water reactors, fueled by enriched uranium-235 that generates the necessary heat to create the power. Four Westinghouse steam turbines produce 280,000 horsepower delivered to the four main propellers. From propulsion mechanics to auxiliary operations, the role of the machinist mates is the backbone of every naval vessel. Heavy training of the machinists results in impeccable duties, like controlling the operation of turbo generators used to produce electrical power for leaning, adjusting, testing, and performing other preventive maintenance on a ship's boilers and main engines. This requires performing heavy physical work that only the most experienced people and teamwork can handle. When the aircraft on a carrier are not in use, most of them are secured in the hangar bay. This area has a total length of more than two-thirds the total size of the entire vessel and is capable of holding at least 60 aircraft and heavy equipment, like spare engines and fuel tanks. Basically, the hangar bay can be considered as a giant garage for fighter jets and helicopters. With its three decks high, the bay is surrounded by several compartments as well as having multiple safety measures, such as fire suppression systems.
to move the aircraft to the flight deck. The crew uses spotting dollies, which are three-wheeled vehicles similar to tractors with hydraulic arms at the front. They help to maneuver the jets through the tight spaces of the hangar bay with precision. The hangar bay also includes the workshops and maintenance areas where technicians can perform essential repairs, checks, and refits on the aircraft. Critical components of the aircraft, like the pressurization systems and oxygen to the ejection seat, are under constant inspection and upkeep. This forms part of the preventive maintenance programs that are regularly performed. However, the training of the crew not only involves prevention, but corrective maintenance. Fixing specific problems, like malfunctioning parts replacement or patching damage sustained during a mission. As part of the maintenance department inside an aircraft carrier, the tire shop is in charge of inspecting, replacing and cleaning all aviation tires and rims. The trained crew members inspect the treads of the tire to see if the part needs to be replaced into a beyond capable maintenance status, meaning there is no chance of repairing the tire. If possible, the tire might get into a deconstruction and reconstruction step for later use. Considering that the hangar bay is at least three decks high, it has several elevators capable of moving the aircraft to the flight deck when needed. These powerful hydraulic elevators can generate enough force to lift two fighter jets, or a total of 74,000 pounds. They are crucial for moving the aircraft when launching and recovering quickly and efficiently. Readiness to any situation is key for the crew members of the carriers, which is why constant training exercises are carried out throughout the year. Inert training bomb movement is done from the magazine to the flight deck during flight operations. Munitions like the 500-pound Mark 82 bombs are transported using specialized load carts that move around the carrier through the use of the inner elevators leading to the upper deck. Then, the munition is transferred into lift trucks for loading the aircraft. Being a training exercise, the bombs contain no explosive material, but an inert one to keep with the original weight of service ammunition. All the ammunition and weapon systems of the aircraft carrier are stored in the weapons magazine. Here, the specialized rooms have blast-resistant airlocks and several safety devices, including a system to flood the compartment with seawater in an emergency. Also, redundant systems and backup plans are implemented to ensure continuous operation in case of any emergency. Considering these safety procedures, not only the weaponry of the vessel itself is stored here, but also the weapon systems of the aircraft that are stationed on the ship. During naval operations, the aircraft carrier magazine is used to manufacture ordnance for the ship. This vital process works like an assembly line in a factory, where the highly trained crew members build the ammunition to be ready for the mission.
Knowing that the urgency of the missions needs it, weapons have to be built on a tight schedule as a number one priority. Thanks to this, each piece of ordnance is built by a team of 10 to 15 people to obtain the piece within the required quality and time. Such quality results from constant training and several certifications obtained by the team members. A build-up sheet is used during the assembly process with the list of components for the specific munition being built, which helps maintain consistency for build-up. Before the 20th century, the refueling process of a ship relied on coaling stations set in key locations for the fleets to get the required fuel during their travels. However, this demanded multiple defended locations during times of warfare, which resulted in an infrastructure that was constantly in danger in case of any disruption. the development of a new system in which a ship could be refueled at sea by another ship, called underway replenishment, started in the early 20th century, achieving operational use during World War I and used extensively during World War II. After this period, the alongside connected replenishment method was created to transfer liquid fuel as well as ammunition and goods between ships. Nowadays, newer technologies like the standard tensioned replenishment alongside method or the involvement of airships such as helicopters to transfer cargo in a method called vertical replenishment. The refueling process requires using a span wire fueling rig that extends the hose from the delivering ship to the receiving ship at a safe distance. To connect this system, a pneumatic line thrower launches the messenger line that pulls the transfer lines to the receiving ship. In the case of bigger ships like aircraft carriers, multiple rigs are settled to increase the load transfer rate. It is important for the crew to maintain control over the safe distance between the ships, as two ships getting closer might create a suction effect and an eventual crash. The arrival of the 21st century led to the development of a new design with a heavier capacity. This meant that the system could transfer 25 loads of 12,000 pounds per hour. Life on board an aircraft carrier requires great dedication and a profound sacrifice. Being 24-7 in constant awareness inside a confined environment and working on demanding technical roles shows the commitment and resilience of the crew. This professionalism is as strong as the teamwork of the unit, reminding the people of the sacrifices made for the greater good. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.